The motivation um, to start this, this place, it comes from uh, two architects, uh, Lucrecia Laudi and Julian Hunt, and they just wanted to instill in Washington DC, which is considered by many kind of a dry political city, in the potential of you know the, the, the art that they can bring to the city, and especially supporting those voices that not, don't have a platform yet. So I think that was the main driver when we saw, when they actually discovered the space here. Our families in general in Argentina, there were this uh, generation of people who understood that education is a pillar of a society. I went to Europe, to Venice, I did my thesis project on a building like Dupont Underground, actually. They're called the Venice Biennales. They create all these um, events uh, every year. And uh, it's a cultural space, and it's a series of buildings that are still there. And the city never knew what to do, but finally they decided it's gonna be a cultural space for the city to promote all this world, uh, art, architecture at world scale. We needed to move back to the United States. There I say we, because I met Julian in Barcelona. We moved to DC, thinking it would be one year, two years probably, but it took since 1996 to today. We are still here. So when we started working, living here, etc., Julian never stopped walking. He has this, he walks and walks and walks and bike, <laughs> cities, whatever he can. And he was the one who really started exploring the neighborhood. What, what you see today is what it was in 1995, you know, close. What the main idea was, look at this, in the middle of the city, you know, another arsenal of Venice, <laughs> no? An obsolete, old, abandoned structure. We are talking about sustainability, we are talking about, you know, a world, a why keep building, new buildings, new structure, what is grow really? Grow, reuse what you have. When we saw this, we say, ah, this is amazing, unexplored, untouched. Can people understand what they have, you know, what we have here? Oh my God, this is paradise. And actually, it's underground also, in a city that just talk about politics, economics. This is a fantastic place to go underground and work in a different way. Let's talk, let's criticize, let's talk about the cities, let's talk, but in a different way. If you hear strange noises, it's because we are starting the construction. Remember, this was just a, a platform in a tunnel. Right, there's, there's nothing, there is you know, no air conditioning, there is no water, but there will be. So we can only use the space certain months of the year and certain days of the year because it's just, it's just too expensive. We, we just don't have the funds to have it open every day. We are an, an organization of volunteers. We don't have, a, we need to create, I mean, it's very difficult. It's very hard to ask a person to volunteer one whole day or every day, or, you know, we need people who will be at the desk or keeping, being sure that the place is open, the place is closed, that people it would have to receive a salary. We can, in the past we did it, you understand? But there is a limit. During the pandemic, obviously, we had to close for a few months, uh, but we actually were incredibly lucky to be able to take advantage of the programs that the DC government put together for shelter venues and, for, and also from the SBA, Small Business Administration, when they were giving, you know, uh, the PPP loans and all those things. So that allowed us to keep the staff. So the staff did not lose its job, which is like an amazing thing. Nothing could have been done without everybody that came and worked with us. With the, with the board, you know, the board, the volunteers. They just love the space, they love the idea, and they bring their more ideas. They also have given us funding for operations, which is great. 
Um, and we're very di diligent with how we spend the money and how we report and all that. So the, the relationship is, is pretty amazing with the commission. Um, so that's one thing. We also uh, get some funding from, uh, this, is, this is a piece of, um, this property belongs to the District of Columbia. It's not ours, we have a lease. So the District of Columbia itself is actually helping with the infrastructure development, with you know, the water and all those things. So those are, those are two, two um, sources of revenue. And the third one is ticket sales. And we know the sales that we have, we have a small bar and that helps, but it's mainly uh, commission, DC government and uh, ticket sales. <laughs> We want to give a platform to those who are just starting, the new talent, uh, the new creators, the new makers that really haven't had a chance to, to show their talent, their work, their product, their, uh, their, their beautiful works of art anywhere else. So what we want to do is actually uh, reach out to different populations, different centers, different, so you can see who, how can we bring something like that? And we have been very successful. The most, probably the most um, rewarding thing that I hear is like, thank you for giving me the first opportunity to see my work outside of my studio. And thank you for giving me the opportunity for other people to see my work. So we do have, you know, themes um, that, that we explore, but we're always thinking about who hasn't had a chance and that's what we're gonna bring here. My company is called A Peace For You, like the peace sign for you. And I started about four years ago and I traveled up and down the United States and I found that people like something unique and different. So I re I'm a retired dentist and I decided to go into my private business as a supplement income. And I knew, noticed that people like something vintage and old even though they don't know what it is and what era it comes from. So I just kind of like figured it out. So I picked hand picked items that kind of fit that vintage feel and give people an opportunity to try on something different and unique, you know, and that's how I started my company. Like the blue. Now we gotta push it all the way. You can lock it all the way. Okay. Then you have a police officer. Police officer. <laughs> DC has a lot of events that are posted, and the, um, they have a lot of things for vendors to do. So you just look up for vendors in DC, and then they um, tell you fill out an application, and they look over your stuff, and you know. So I done. Um, this is my second event. Last week I was at the Shallow Baptist at Busy Bee, and that was a big event too. So. I heard about the underground and then they passed me on to different people. But normally most of my events are um, local Virginia, Maryland, DC, and then I do travel. This is my first time here, but it won't be my last time. And I did used to last year, I did do um, 14th and P on the corner. But that was very successful. Every Sunday I would be out there, so until it gets too cold. Sibline Inc. is Sibline for the siblings that are in line. Okay, we um, have uh, Jamaican, authentic Jamaican food. So we have curry chicken, mac and cheese, a little Jamaican American type thing going on. Salmon, jerk wings, rice and peas, cabbage, whole lot of delicious food. We also have an authentic rum punch and a seasonal eggnog going on today. It smells delicious. Thank you, thank you. It also tastes delicious. So you come back and eat. This is acrylic and mixed media paintings, um, size six by six through, I have some 18 by 24s. I started painting right before the pandemic um, and carried on with that to stay sane uh, during lockdown. 
Um, yeah, and we're very excited. We were here about uh, two months ago, and it's really just a nice opportunity to be somewhere so historic. I came here, there was um, a mixed media kind of presentation of the Associated Press's top 100 photos, um, and that was wanted to leave my past behind and it's not that I go back to the past and I don't build new no just the opposite I want all my past to be part of what I am today and I'm very proud I'm proud of being Argentinian I'm proud of being Latin America I'm proud of diversity I'm proud no so then this is what is going to be translated in what we do now at Dupont and the Grand. Uh, for the future it's, it's just amazing because I mean even with with the I would say shell that we have and we want to keep it this way this is not going to be transformation transformed into a um, golden marble thing this is going to be but it's going to be um there's more people coming there will be a bigger capacity um i i know that foundations are interested now in in us as we keep being you know being more um active in our productions and programming but at the end you know life is like that you know with the sunrise you know that you can go 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 round and then you come back so the important thing is your journey you know what you do in life it doesn't matter if you get credits you don't get credits who cares that something comes one in the newspaper and then nobody reads it again or you become a famous people who repeats the same thing again and again no life is what you do next that it can be interesting for you and for people.